Hi, welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to explain about um, the JUnit runner, or rather, the different options in uh, that you can, you can have in JUnit runner. Now, this is going to be useful for who people um, who are learning, uh, both testers or automation testers or developers. Now, on my screen, I have the JUnit runner that I've created to run my tests. Uh, you see a lot, uh, uh, lots of different options here. Now, you don't need all, all these, to be honest. You can just, um, all you need, if you want to just run all the tests, all you need is, is the features, the features uh, and the glue, and the tag if you want, if you want to run certain tests with the tag, okay? I'm just going to delete this, those two imports. Now, you would see these go <coughs> gone into red. Now, that's because obviously I deleted the imports that are necessary for this. Okay, for the, uh, these two are annotations, JUnit annot annotations, okay? Now, um, you, there are two different ways you can actually download the imports. You can hover over and click on import class to import there you go it's called the import now or you can click on it and press alt and enter in intellij you can import that way too okay now the run with annotation um is from junit class and it's telling it tells the junit that tests should run using cucumber class which is present in the junit package Okay, that's what this does, and, the, and then you have uh, you have the other annotation cucumber options annotation. This tells cucumber <clears throat> things like where to look for the feature files, uh, what what different options, all these different options. What are the different options you need to use? That's what that does. Okay, and now let's take a look at each of these options you have inside here. Now you have. Um, the plugin okay now um, you, you you have a pretty option that option um, uh, it, it you that's used to print the gherkin source with additional colors and stack traces um, for errors in in reports that's what that does it's good to have it actually then you have um, <clears throat> you have different reporting options you have HTML um, uh, report you can have and then you can have a timeline which will actually show the different min files and the JSON report, the JUnit report. Out of all these, these two are the most widely used. This one and this one especially. Because that report um, is understood by most of the continuous integration um, servers who are, which will use it to generate visual reports. Okay, and this is what we actually use in uh, in our in, in our company now let's just run um, the test and I can I can explain the reports then to you okay let's run it you can right click in your JUnit runner and run it um, or you can actually click here to run the test okay, okay it's being run now, now while it's being run, run um, I have a simple test here okay, let me just uncomment that that's going to fail actually. Let's run it again. Now I have um, um, a simple Gherkin scenario here. Um, if you go into this, you can click uh, click on it, um, control click to go into it. Now all it does is uh, this is my step definition file. Um, I have the I have um, these are the, my implementations inside it. All it does is it goes to that website BBC and then clicks on that link news and it does an assertion. Right. So I created this for the demo purpose. Okay, the tests of the tests are being run now. Now it's less. If you look at the target folder, this is where everything um, the test outputs are put in the target folder. Okay, so when you clean here. Um, that will disappear okay so okay now if you look at the target folder you have the um, HTML folder here okay it's from here and then if you're going to cucumber you have all the various um, 
you can see the, the HTML file and the JS file. Then you can have the timeline. If you go, there you go, the timelines, different min files, some report JS, HTML files again, okay. Then the important ones are here, okay, or at least to me, these are the two important ones. If you open them, so the, that is these two. The XML file uh, is quite simple. Um, when it passes, when it fails, you'll, you, you will also see the stack trace here. Okay, so now you can see if you go into this, you go to the class name. The class name is actually the, the feature name. Okay, that is what the class name. And, and this is the, uh, is the scenario name. So if you look here, you can see navigate the site, that's the scenario name. And then of course the steps here, past, past. If you have multiple steps, obviously all of them will be shown here. Now this report, this XML file can be used um, uh, to export the data. For example, in our case, we actually, uh, we run it through a pipeline and we output uh, the, the uh, output XML file we export to another application and we manipulate the data for different, pur different um, uh, uh, purposes, different reasons. Okay, um, so that's what, that is the purpose of this. Now, as uh, um, you don't need, um, as I've said, you don't need all, all of these, but I'm just explaining in case um, you would want to use. Now, dry run is by default is set false. All dry run does is it checks for these uh, um, these gherkins here, scenarios and the and all, all these um, gherkin steps, and then it also looks make sure that you have corresponding step definition. Okay, it doesn't look what is in it doesn't care what is inside here. All it does is whether you have corresponding step def definition. That, 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 that's all it does. So it's useful in some places and com some companies, they um, they create the step definition, they create the gherkin and, and scenarios and the step definition, but the implementation is done at a later stage. Uh, so in those cases, they, they want to see if all the corresponding gherkins have step definition. You set that to true. And then if you run the test, you will see it doesn't, <coughs> perform any um, anything that is inside the step definition of oh, see you can see here all it's done is is checking whether you have the step definition necessary step def, def, definitions that's what it does okay so um, yes that's that's what that is um, that's what the um, Okay, that's what that is. And so you can actually, by default, I'm going to set it to false um, because we don't need it here. Then you have the next option you have is use file name compatible name. Okay, now that is to, that will actually enforce a rule that your, uh, the names of your um, names of your test cases is uh, made up of only uh, letters from A to Z and numbers from 0 to 9. You can't have any other special characters in your um, uh, test case names. That is the that is the purpose of this. When I say test case names here, that's what I actually mean, meant. You can't have anything other than that. Okay, so it's good, good to stick to that, to be honest. You can set it to false and have anything you want, but um, uh, by con the convention is that you use um, a letter A to Z, both capital, either capital or lowercase, and numbers 0 to 9. Okay, and then you have step notification. Now, step notification, once set to um, uh, true, you will actually see the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the steps will be included in the notifications and, and uh, descriptions. So this will align the test case in the Cucumber JVM domain or, or the scenarios. This align the test cases in the scenarios with the test case in the JUnit domain. So for example, if I set that to false and run the test, let's see what happens. 
keep noticing here I don't have I can't see any uh, it, um, it's not showing me any test stats it's showing me the feature and the scenario that's what this does okay if you set it to false I would set that to true let me just stop that running so, um, now if you run it again then you will see the steps here it's actually quite useful really useful um, a more readable and a more yeah, informative okay you can actually now it actually shows you the steps <clears throat> so that is the purpose of that okay the then you have uh, monochrome Mo monochrome all it does is it will make the console output more readable okay if you set that to false and let's just run the test again keep looking at this here keep looking here what yeah once you have the output once the tests are run okay there you go <clears throat> now this is how it appears now you notice this kind of this is kind of um, grayed grayed out not really you know active enabled um here also here this line here and these two lines now let's start to set monochrome to true run it again and see what happens If you look now, see that it's all enabled. That is enabled. Those two lines are enabled. So it just makes it more readable. Okay, I think we skipped strict actually. Um, this is an important option. So strict would um, would make sure that all your um, uh, steps or um, uh, all your tests have valid step de definitions. Okay, so um, if you uh, if you have an undefined step uh, definition, um, the it'll, um, it will the test will fail. Okay, so you have let's just remove when you okay when I I'm just going to comment this step definition completely. I'm not committing the not just the implementation and committing out completely. So okay, don't don't get confused, don't be confused with the dry run. Okay, now you can see this gone into gray because it's telling me that you know I don't have a step definition for it. Now I have set strict um, to true, so let's see what happens. It should fail this time. There you go. It's failed. Okay. Now I can't find. Now um, if I set strict to false, so let's see what it does. Okay, it hasn't see you can see it's, it's passed. So it hasn't failed. Um, the build is passed. Okay, that is the purpose of this. So you may have situations, I don't know if you whether you you ever want to use it, but um, it's, it's set to false. I would also always uh, have it set to true. But um, yeah, so that is the purpose of strict. Then of course you have the features. This is very important <coughs> option. Um, this would when you you, you have the, the you supply the path of your feature files okay so here i've supplied source te source test and resources that's that's where all my feature files would be of course i have only one and so system will look for uh, uh for feature files in the folder then you have another option called snippets so you have two options in snippets one is camel case 
or if you can see here, you have underscore. These are two options you have. Now, camel case is the convention. Camel case is what most of the people I've seen using camel case in their uh, development um, or in programming um, life. Now, uh, camel case, uh, so Cucumber generates co code snippets in underscore style by default. Okay, but I don't like underscore style, so I I, I want I want um, camel case. So let's okay, let us okay, let's run it again. This will be enough for me to actually show. Run it again, and I'll explain what camel case is if you don't know already. I'm sure you 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 know it, but if you don't know, um, I'll explain. Okay, so it's failed. Now it's giving me this, 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 it's generated this code snippet. Now this is the camel case. Okay, now that is obviously from my Gherkin here. I navigated the site. I got one, uh, five, five words in that line. Okay, it's all put together. Now it's actually changed. If you notice here, I was um, uppercase. Now it's actually lowercase. This is what camel case is. All the words will be put together, and then the first. Sorry, that's not what camel, camel case is. The the way it displays is camel case, not the way it's put together. Okay. Now the in camel case, the first letter would be lowercase. Then you will have the capital. The first letter of the next word would be the uppercase. Then the uh, the next um, uh, uh, words first letter would be uppercase, so on and so forth. It just goes on like that. That is what is called camel case. Okay, and this this is what more, mostly people use. Okay, so that is. Um, but if you want have underscore. Again, this is not an option you need to have, okay? So it's just not op optional option. Let's run it again and see how the code snippet um, appears. Okay, it's going to fail um, with the code snippet again. Okay, now if you look at this code snippet, you see that you have underscore I underscore navigate underscore um, to underscore the site. That's what it does. That's, that's the use of um, of snippets. I'm going to change it back to, um, to uh, camel case, which is what I would prefer. Let me just uncomment that. Okay, there you go. It's all gone active now. Now, what is the next? The glue. Okay, this is where so by using using the glue you're telling a system where to look for the step definition okay i've said uh, i've given the the package name com dot t cell which is here so it'll look anywhere it'll look all the places all the different for list for the for the corresponding um uh step definition for the for the scenario uh, for the for scenarios from this folder that's why the glue uh, you have to supply the glue okay we can make it empty if you want but you have to still have supply that option so then you have the tags so i given um i'm running with the tag here when it's, it's useful or when you have more than one obviously but I, I just done it for demo purpose you can run you can have multiple tags um you can have um, you can have tags i i actually have another video in my channel as uh, we shall explain how to use um, uh, tags. Now to run, so that is briefly about the diff different options you can have in JUnit um, Runner. As I've said originally, you don't need all, all these, you can, but you can pick and choose. Now you have obviously this class here that needs to be empty. Okay, that's, that's how it should be. You can run the test by right clicking on it or clicking here or you can run it by clicking on the verify or you can run it from the command line like like this maven clean you don't need yeah you can use clean if you want um that 
or verify verify would actually do all the clean um comp compile all the stuff anyway but um and then hyphen d d is used to pass a parameter okay so and then uh, you supply cucumber dot filter dot tags and supply the tags and then press enter it will run the test so those are those are different ways of running the test um okay i think um that is briefly um about the j unit runner and uh, and the different options you can have in it okay i hope um the video has been um of some use um so if you think it's been useful please do subscribe and goodbye